be honest. When was the last time you laughed at home? Wouldn't you love the chance to see live comedy? Great news. October 1st to October 4th, we've got Plano Virtual Comedy Festival. Live comedy from the comfort of your own home. We've got stand-ups from Los Angeles to New York, from Canada to Malaysia, from Conan to NBC to Fox. And on Zoom, you'll have a front row seat to every show all weekend. Head to PlanoComedyFestival.com to get yourself a weekend of hilarious comedy straight through your computer via Zoom. Plano Virtual Comedy Festival. Go to PlanoComedyFestival.com for more information. Get your tickets discounted when you buy before the end of September. Again, go to www.PlanoComedyFestival.com for tickets, lineup, and schedules. Bring the laughter back into your household. PlanoComedyFestival.com for all of your festing at home comedy needs. MediaTek Institute is a proud sponsor of the Plano Comedy Festival. Baby, I hear those blues are calling. It's time for the Fraser on Fraser podcast. Hello, welcome. It is I, Adam Fraser, your host. With me, as always, is Mr. Wes Corwin. How are you doing, Wes? I'm doing fantastic. I'm doing real good. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Fraser on Fraser podcast. Uh, we really do appreciate uh, you listening. Uh, we we don't actually have. Uh, we only exist, me and Wes, when we're actually being listened to on this podcast. We have no co- we have no corporeal form. No. We're only disembodied voices. Yeah. So we don't actually have any uh, existence outside of this podcast. So it's like as soon as you turn us off, we just disappear from existence. Sort of. We really right. appreciate you turning in and giving us a brief <laughs> a brief taste of what it's like to be like a real person. It's a waking nightmare. It is uh, unfathomably terrible. The moments in between when you listen. So, th- so thank you for taking responsibility. Uh, Never ending, but all, but somehow also it, it doesn't last a second. Oh, uh, yeah. it's it's so strange. It's it's the weirdest. Uh, it's a hell. It's a hell is what it is. Exactly. <laughs> um, so today we were talking about a midwinter night dream, uh, season one, episode seventeen of Frasier. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, this is a pretty highly anticipated episode. This is a, uh, this is a big deal. We're finally we're hitting we're hitting a, an arc. We're hitting a peak. This is the this is the end of an era right here. Well, and and it's uh yeah. So we're dealing in this episode. We're head on. We're taking on the issue of Niles and his attraction to Daphne, mm-hmm. uh, who which has been sort of hinted at and played for laughs throughout the entire season so far. Um, so it's now kind of coming, well, I mean, maybe not, not to a head exactly, but, but it is, it, they are, they are toying around with the idea more than they have we're, we're take, so far in the streets. We're taking what has been a running joke and we're, we're addressing things of, things are kind of being thrown into the forefront, particularly Frazier who spends a good chunk of the first act kind of confronting Niles. Like I've been ignoring this because I thought it was like, you know, it's cute. You have like a crush on. But this has been, like, months now, and you have a wife. What's going on here? And uh, we're finally there to when this happens. Yeah, yeah, I think you said it good on the last episode where, I mean, the the thing with Niles and Daphne has kind of been the B story of the entire season one. Mm-hmm. So this is sort of an episode just dedicated to that one B story mm-hmm. of, um, you know, what's the deal with Niles and Daphne. Um so I mean, I was I was looking forward to it. I was looking for forward to getting your reaction yes. uh, of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's dive into it, shall we? Um, <laughs> so uh, we start off. It's Catherine Nervosa. It's Fraser Niles. I feel like this is the first time in forever we haven't started in uh, Fraser's recording booth. Yes. Um, so it's it's Niles and and, and Fraser. They're ordering coffee at Cafe Nervosa, and they're sort of typical snooty way where they have to have everything they have to have their coffee exactly the way they like it yeah the level of specificity including a request on how much foam that it has to be aesthetically pleasing but not so much that it leaves a mustache uh and then uh to which 
the waiter replies, uh, cinnamon or chocolate on it, and Niall suddenly gets flustered at how complicated this ordering process is. Yeah, like he's he's like he's the asshole. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um. So we we move on from that, and then Daphne enters the scene. She is come to Captain Nervose to get uh to get some beans, some coffee beans. Mm-hmm. Which she, I don't know if you don't know this was coffee beans aren't actually beans. They're they're more they're more uh akin to seeds. I've never thought about coffee beans, so that makes sense to me. They're like a oh yeah you're right the coffee bean is a seed of the coffea plant and the source for coffee. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you know this, but it's actually the pit inside uh, the red or purple fruit, often referred to as a cherry. It, it's it's strange how the human language evolves, and we call things uh, that aren't beans or aren't seeds. Well, that aren't beans, beans. Yeah. Uh, how does that happen? How, 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 uh, what's what's the story there? What's the scoop? It's one of the great mysteries. It was it was it was Gerald beans who first Gerald discovered beans. the coffee yep. and he decided to name it after himself meanwhile uh there was a different uh meanwhile uh G- george washington carver beans uh who had <laughs> taken the time to a different inventor from the other side of the globe had taken the time to catalog and inventory all the beans uh and he he had very strict standards and he called he called uh G- gerald and uh he called other beans and he was like hey you can't you can't name you can't name coffee beans beans. They don't match. And the other guy was like, fuck you. And then that's... Uh, that's I'm the... Gerald Beans. <laughs> I'm Gerald Beans. You can't tell me what to do. I'm, I'm Sri Lankan. I don't give a shit about your East Asian... Uh, <laughs> I think that's important to know that Gerald Beans was Sri Lankan and George Washington Carver Beans was from Mongolia. And they just had very... They had very similar uh, life goals. But uh, worlds apart. Yeah. Yeah. God. Um, so we, so now, so Daphne, she's in Cavern, so she's buying the beans. Yeah. Um, she kind of strikes up a conversation with Eric, the waiter, who, who uh, we, we just we've saw seen taken Fraser and Niles' order. We did, and we've also seen him in uh, three previous episodes. He's been, a, he's consistently been the waiter. This is the first time he's been named. Yeah, this is, this is his first named appearance uh, all the other appearances, it's it's just he's just credited as a waiter. Mm-hmm. There's I want to say this 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 person and one other. So it's, it's a girl, but she she has sort of a reoccurring role as a waiter in Cafe Nervosa. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to see that they at least keep it somewhat consistent with who's working at Cafe sure. Nervosa. Of course, and then uh, week to week. Go ahead, go ahead. And I feel like they probably at some point intended that. I, 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 character at Cafe Nervosa, someone who worked at Cafe Nervosa, to become a bigger character than they actually did. Sure. Like, maybe that would have evolved had, you know, I don't know, they decided to do it. Right, but then it didn't happen. No, no, we just occasionally get little glimpses into the people who work at uh, Cafe Nervosa, we never get, like, a full-fledged uh, story out of them. No. I never was. Um, so, so, Daphne is sort of smitten with Eric. Uh, they have sort of a very, uh, it's, it's, it's sort of a, I don't know, sort of a double entendre with, with coffee conversation. I don't lot, know how to, of, tell, to describe it. A lot, lot, of, lot, of, lot of insinuation based on coffee. And, and oh, would you like my special blend and lines like this? Oh, yeah. A lot, Ooh, of, yeah. Lot, of, uh, lot of that kind of, a uh, lot, lot of those comments. Yeah, and this of course makes Niles super jelly. Um, um, he peanut butter and jelly. Yes, um, he he says that you know that man is hitting on her. Uh, don't know how she stands it, but you know, Fraser of course points out that they seem to be you know Daphne doesn't seem to mind. She said they seem to be getting along just fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's Niles who has kind of the problem, right? Um, and he asks her about Maris, uh, or he asks Niles about Maris. Uh, there's nothing. He, he Frazier, he he hasn't really asked Niles directly about his infatuation with Daphne. He's kind of he's teased him about it, but like this is the first time he's been like, no, seriously, this is becoming a problem. 
what is your deal? Why are you doing this? And he's also enough of a he's he he and his brother are both uh, in a field of medicine where he can in, he can infer that you know this probably isn't like Niles is out to cheat on clearly there's something wrong with his uh, marriage to Maris, and Niles right. confronted with that admits like in a bit of a rut where in a Niles refers to it as a gray numbing blandness. Which, Which <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, it's kind of a that's a hell sad, of a description. Sad comment. All right. Yeah. Um. So it's so yeah. Fraser basically, you know, tries to comfort Niles and is trying to sort of steer him back in the direction of Maris because mm-hmm. I think Fraser probably does have uh, some concerns about Niles pursuing someone else when he's he's married to another woman. Right. Um. That's just a whole thing that I imagine Frazier would like love to avoid mm-hmm. um, so we we cut to ASL uh, it's, the, it's the radio station uh, Frazier walks in, Roz is there uh, Roz is in a, in a mood, mm-hmm. she doesn't want to Frazier asks how, how she is and she's all like oh well if you really want to know how I am I'll tell you but are you or are you just saying that to make conversation and Frazier's like oh well I'm just making conversation <laughs> and... um, but he does ask her her advice on uh, sex mm-hmm. uh, specifically uh, or specifically uh, you know relationships what to do when the romance goes out of relationship, Roz, of course, being very experienced when it comes to having relationships. Um, so Frazier sees her as, you know, I guess a guru of sorts. Uh, a love uh, guru starring Mike Myers, as you were, <laughs> as it were. Yes. And um, so Roz gives her usual sassy replies. And it's like, oh, if, um, what, what, what do I do when, a rom- when the romance goes relationship i usually get dressed and go home (laughs) very clever um so but she goes on to tell tell him about um she was in a relationship with someone uh they did some role playing where uh they pretended they didn't know each other and meet up in a bar yep that was and that and that was you know pretty hot uh they did it another time and he had, wound up going home with another woman, and that was, you know, kind of heartbreaking. <laughs> kind of a kind of a bummer when that happened. It took the yeah, role, it's taking the role play a little too far. Kind of a method acting thing at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. I, I, oh man! I, f- it it just dawned on me. I bet it must be the most maddening thing to like have a sexual role play situation. With like Joaquin Phoenix, I bet he really needs to like get into character. I bet he, oh man, I bet he's the worst human being. Ah, <laughs> oh, could you imagine? Hold on, I'm talking to my Purdue. Ah, oh, she's gone. Wait, no, come back, come back. Ah, uh, it's gone. No, uh, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to field that over to. Ah, uh, it's fine. The moment. My producer has to use the restroom, so that's uh, that's what's going on there. Uh, okay. Could you imagine him like dressed as a like? I feel like you couldn't dress him as like like a, like a like a sexy boat captain because he'd insist on like uh, all the correct maritime knots and he'd get irritated and insist you weren't <laughs> taking it seriously if you mixed up like port and starboard. I feel like it would be the worst. Could you imagine uh, uh, <laughs> being in a sexy role play situation with Joaquin Phoenix and he just. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing the Joker dance. On the well, this episode's gold. This one's getting the Emmy. Uh, everything else is just coasting. Let's let's get back to Frazier. <laughs> let's talk Frazier. Um. So yes, Roz essentially gives Frazier the idea to give Niles the idea that uh for 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 him to spice up him and Maris's uh, marriage with some role play. Mm-hmm. Um, so we cut to uh, uh, Frazier's apartment. Uh, Frazier uh, answers the door. It's Niles. And he is, in, in, he is distraught because he has been kicked out by Maris. Um, and he reveals, he's wearing a raincoat, so he takes it off and it reveals that he's dressed in pirate attire. 
Um, he's got like a puffy shirt. He's got like the little, the, the, like the sash around his waist. He's got the boots. Uh, the whole, it's a whole ensemble. He, um, he looks a lot like a like a like a pirate of Penzance, or perhaps one of the animatronics from Pirates of the Caribbean, as uh, we're about to reference in a in a in a Martin. No, no, no. Fraser Fraser zings him. Fraser looks like oh, yeah. yeah. He, he does he does the Pirates of the Caribbean. He thing. does. Do um, real quick, just of interesting to point out um the 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 shirt that niles is wearing in this uh for the pirate outfit is the same shirt that would appear in an episode of seinfeld uh it's the puffy shirt is it the I, same I, shirt it's the same shirt now i don't i'm not i'm not as well versed with uh with seinfeld as i think you are i i, I don't think i've even seen an episode of but i'm familiar with it and, and i know that that episode is somewhat uh famous for it's, that it's for a that, it's a fun shirt. episode that happens to prominently feature a puppy shirt so that is very fun is it the same yeah. model of sh- is it the same not model you know what I mean. is it the same like type of shirt or is it literally they took the shirt from the fraser episode and then used it on the side or vice versa i don't even know which came you, first. you know the imdb trivia page and we have no idea how well this is sourced like this could just be made up okay. but i feel like i've seen this bit of trivia posted other places mm-hmm. like on cracked or something but like yeah it's 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 they just it's the same shirt so I, I would take that to mean that it's like just a short that shirt that they have in wardrobe uh, along with you know tons of other outfits, and it was this it was graph for both this scene and Seinfeld. So Delightful. that's how it happens. Um, just interesting. Just thought I'd mention it. Um, it. So yeah, Frey Niles is in this ridiculous uh, pirate attire, and he's been kicked out by Maris. She he he was hiding in like the closet, I think it was. Mm-hmm. And he was, I think he was naked. I think he, he was wearing only uh, some of the pirate outfit. And I think he had like a, I think he had like the eye patch covering his junk or something. I think that was the implication of one of the lines that they gave. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, rather than Maris fighting him, it's the upstairs maid. Yep. Which I just find it's hilarious that they, the implication that they have uh, made specifically for their upstairs is uh, of their of their house, presumably one for each floor, so that they never accidentally run into each other and discover that the yeah yeah I know it makes sense to me of course yeah why would um, why would you this... want your third floor maid and your fifth floor maid intermingling you gotta you gotta keep them separate right <laughs> um, and so yeah it, Maris walks in on them at the exact wrong time and just takes it completely out of context and then she kicks. Uh, kick Niles out of the house. So this is pretty devastating for Niles. Um, this is the first time I think we've really heard of, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure Niles and Meredith have had fights in the past, but I don't think that this has ever happened where Niles has been kicked out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yes, it's, it's very troubling. Niles is very upset. Um, he somewhat bl- blames Frazier um, uh, even though Frazier comes back saying that, you know, oh, well, I, I just su- suggested sexual role pa- play. I didn't, uh, tell you to go, you know, full Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole thing. It it's very, hmm. very upsetting for Niles. Of course, um, of but it's, he's, he's basically, he's basically resolved to make things right between him and Maris. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's he's staying the night at Fraser's house for the time being. They, uh, he he's he's sleeping on the couch, and um, as he you know goes to sleep on the couch, everyone else goes to bed. It's the middle of the night, I think. Um, that's when Naphne comes home <gasps> from her date with Eric. Gas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and she doesn't know, of course, what's just transpired. She's just coming home to a, a dark house. Uh, doesn't know that Niles is even there. Um, so yes, she, Niles overhears her saying goodnight to Eric, who you know presumably they've just been on some sort of date. Um, so it's a very it's it's sort of a one-two punch. Yes. To Niles, he's he's gotten kicked out by his wife, and now he has to listen to Daphne, uh, who has apparently just had this fantastic date with this uh, with this other man. Complete with a with a very sitcom Saved by the Bell like 
lean back on the door you just closed and like uh, fall down. Like, wow, what a date I just had. Very, very yeah. TV writer's idea of what a post date feels like. The immediately <laughs> like, wow, what a date. Time to, to time to play video games for a few hours. <laughs> Whatever mm-hmm. Daphne does. I'm, I'm, I'm sure she's playing video games. I'm sure she's playing, like, Call of Duty or something. I'm sure she gets on the multiplayer. Well, this is 1994, so she might be playing... You're right. Uh, <laughs> Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. That's probably... Or, like, maybe she's, like, on, like, a Doom server or something. That might... Yeah, I bet she's getting on the Doom servers. What a date. Um, what, a, what a night out with Eric. And now to, to frag nerds. Frag nudes. <laughs> Was that a term? I think. I, I, it, you can make up anything, and it can be a gamer term. I, um, I feel that. Time to Mountain uh, Dew these dudes. Is that a thing? I think that's a thing. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we it's the ne- we cut to the next morning. Uh, it's breakfast. Uh, Daphne is just going on and on about her date with Eric Ugh. and how she's you know exhibiting the three signs of a woman in love. She can't stop thinking about him. She can't eat, and she's bought herself all new underwear. Which, yeah, all right. I, I, mean, I, okay. I don't, uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know enough. I don't know enough. What do you? What, I mean, yeah. If Daphne says it, it has to be true, Wes. That, those are clearly the three signs of a woman in love. Those are the three it's signs. Just, you can't. You, there are no other signs. You Google it. That's that's what comes up. I've. I. I will. I will Google. <laughs> Go on. Um, but yeah, uh, of course, I think it's Martin who quipped, "Oh, we got to get her a girlfriend to talk to." Because is it Martin? He doesn't want to hear all that 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 stuff about underwear. Mm-hmm. Um, but of course, we see we also see Niles. He's he is at the dinner uh, the breakfast table rather. Um, he is. <laughs> he, he gets he snaps at uh, Daphne a bit because he doesn't want to hear about Eric. It's a little rude. It's a little rude, is what it is. Yeah, she says Eric, Eric, Eric. Why must everything be about Eric? Uh, um, but uh, Niall uh, Fraser suggests that they, him and uh, Fraser, or sorry, Niles and Maris <laughs> go through uh, couples therapy. Oh, apparently. Oh yeah, so we find out that um, Niles wants to, you know, get back together and make amends with Maris, but he can't because she has flown off to Arizona for the weekend. Yes. So this is another thing that's fairly typical of Maris is that whenever she's in sort of a very stressful situation, she just kind of takes off. Whenever she's upset, she's uh, gone to go to a place where she can be under a lot of coats. Where you just right. a multitude of coats. You, you, you know what? You don't have enough coats at home to lay down upon yourself and be on the bed. Uh, so you go to a you go to like Siberia, where they just have like a lot of coats, and you just pile the coats on yourself until you feel uh, whole again, as is Maris's way. So um, yeah, so he, he Miles and Fraser and Martin, they all help. Uh, Niles hatched this plan to win Maris back. Um, they're going to basically just have a romantic dinner for her, mm-hmm. waiting at home when she gets back. Yep. Um, but the the cook walked out in solidarity for Maris, so Niles has got to try and figure out something himself. Um, Daphne offers to cook for him because she's uh, you know she's a, a she cooks. I know that. Oh, before we do this, I know that I know this is sort of a, a, an aside, like a sort of it's sort of a sort of an odd thing to compliment, like, hey, this is how we get uh, Daphne and Niles in the same house so we can play out the second half of the episode. Uh, given what we know about Maris, that she's not warm or inviting and frequently doesn't speak, and I, I'm surprised she's developed a sort of camaraderie with the cook. Uh, that's an interesting thing that sort of defies what we know about Maris as a character. I mean, yeah, that is a little strange. Um, I caught that too. I, I mean, maybe, <laughs> maybe the cook was just looking for a way out of there. That would you make saw sense. That yeah. is the, the first excuse. Oh, Maris isn't here. She walked out on you. I'm 
going with her. I, I you know what? I I you got to you got to take a stand sometimes, boss, and this time I'm leaving you like your wife is leaving you. That's what well, I You're going to come back if she, if she comes back. Nope. nope. I'm so angry. I'm just, just, just put me off the whole thing. I'm a man of my principles. I'll be back Monday. I'm taking a four-day weekend. I'll see you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Daphne has to cook for Niles. He's going to come. She's going to go over to Niles and Meredith's house, and she's going to uh, make a big, fancy, romantic dinner for Niles and Maris to enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um Oh, we also get a listing of all the things that Mar- Maris can't eat. So it's uh, shellfish, poultry, red meat, saturated fats, nitrates, wheat, starch, sulfites, uh, MSG or dairy. <laughs> it's she's got very she's she's got a lot of dietary restrictions. She and this is our canonical list going forward. So if anything does, then then it's a it's a plot hole if they make up something later. Oh yeah, we're gonna be looking at this list. Like a hawk. I'm I'm copy pasting this in my note. This is very important to me. Um. So we get our act two. Um. Uh, we get two title cards. I'm, I'm just I'm I'm. We get it was a dark and stormy night, and then that fades out, and then comes back. No, really. Um, <laughs> Got you. You thought it was, so, and now it is. So this is the first time we're seeing uh, Crane Manor, the uh, the home of Frazier, uh, or God Niles, Niles and Maris. I mean, they are. They, uh, yeah, no, yes. It's this huge. It's it's supposed to be this huge Gothic mansion. They've got very fancy things. There's a grand piano. There's a huge fireplace. Uh, big old stairway. It's just a crazy big place, and you know. It's very different from from Fraser's apartment. Uh-huh. Um, you you get a sense of what uh, what it must be like living with Maris in a place like that. Yeah, I I I mean I I imagine living with like is mostly not being around. I am as as fun as it is to imagine. If if you're realistically imagining a life with Maris, I imagine it's a lot of a lot of naps, a lot of occupying yourself as she naps. Yeah, I, and I think they kind of get into that too. I don't think they really. Niles and Maris, they don't really sort of interact as much as they just sort of sort of they sort of exist coexist together. Right, it's like a roommate situation. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, and it's just it's just a familiarness with with one another. They don't really like. Uh, well, we'll get into it. We'll but, get into um, it. We'll, we'll get there. So, um, it's 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 very stormy outside. Uh, Niles has brought uh, some some stuff to warm, uh, help get uh, afternoon warm because the wetness outside, <laughs> um, and. They, yeah, they, they, they start talking about the, the glockenspiel. This, the, this is an important bit that's going to come up later, is uh, this glockenspiel that uh, Niles has prepared that uh, is uh, of significance. They bought it on their honeymoon, uh, Maris and Niles bought it on their honeymoon in Zurich. Uh, it's, it's supposed to play beautiful music, and now it doesn't. How's that for irony? Uh, it- mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, we also hear, yeah, yeah. So it was, it, it was a rare. We also get to, uh, we get a little bit of backstory as far as Niles and Maris's first meeting. So apparently she was, she was returning from an antique store. Uh, she had bought a bell jar which belonged to Sylvia Plath, which I think is a joke. Yes. Um. And uh, she couldn't get the gate open to their to her house, and now saw her, and he offered her assistance. And uh, suddenly there was a spark of electricity when they touched, and it was, it was and it was suddenly the gates magically parted, and it was like they were meant to be together. So that that is that is the meeting of Niles and Maris. That is their first. Uh, that's that's what led to them getting married. Mm. Uh, it was three years later. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, 
so yeah, there's and and they bought a Glockenspiel together, and now don't play music no more. Yeah, which the 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 studio audience laughs at like what a, a sign we were meant to be together, and then we got married three years later, and the crowd laughs like, oh, I can't believe it took them that long, like. Yeah, some people are practical. Some people are like, yeah, no, static electricity happens and sometimes gates open. It's going to, it's not a sign like, oh, let's put our lives down. You got a date, you got to get to know each other. This is the first time they met each other. I don't understand. I, I, among the many weird, I, so here's the thing. I get on board with all the performers. If there's one group of people I feel antagonistic against on this show, it's the studio <laughs> audience. Which I don't know if they get the show sometimes. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, that's why you have like a a, a sign which tells people when to laugh. Isn't that what you always see in studio audiences? I, I yes, I believe that's a thing. I believe that's a, a. But I imagine there have to be some people who are just laughing because, oh, they said something that sounded a little. You know, weird, so it, that's it, probably a joke. It's the end of a sentence, and that's uh, <laughs> that's a lot of sitcom comedy. Um, so, yeah, the we get that whole scene. Uh, oh, uh, it's, we, we find out that uh, uh, Maris may not be coming oh, no. to the house. What a... Yeah, because apparently there's... Uh, she doesn't feel safe traveling, so... The sto- I guess the, it's because of the fire. This is apparently a very, very loud... It, as we cover in the title card, it was a dark and stormy night. And Maris has frequently uh, canceled on plans and parties that Frazier has invited uh, both Niles and Maris out to, or dinner. We haven't seen her make a commitment once, so in the face of an actual storm, of course she uh, cancels and drops. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and it does seem to be quite a bad storm. I think even Niles is like, oh, well, the storm's not that bad. And then uh, a yeah, loud the rumble of and, thunder. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, to, and yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's the joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's kind of a disappointment, but now it's just Daphne and Niles together alone in a, in a big old mansion, uh, dark it's, it's wet it's, it's anything could happen anything could happen uh but two fraser's apartment uh so martin is it's martin and fraser um a, martin is on the phone with uh daphne i believe mm-hmm. yes um and daphne is explaining to martin that she's not going to be home because again the storm's real bad um, so he, Martin just tells her to stay the night. Yep. Uh, Frazier, uh, hearing this is like, oh, well, you told her to spend the night? Well, you know how Niles feels about her. Right. Uh, and Martin kind of brushes this off. It's like, oh, it's just one of Niles' little crushes. Uh, Frazier's like, you're probably right. It's, he'd never try and, he'd never try and do anything with Maris in the house. Mm-hmm. Which Martin, of course responds oh she she never made it back she's stuck in arizona and then and fraser hearing this leaps into action he's like i've got to get daphne out of there Mm -hmm. and uh (laughs) when confronted i so you have to appreciate fraser i guess it's pragmatism he's like they could make a mistake and i need to be there to support them so there is some nobility but it is it's a recipe of, for disaster. It's a recipe for disaster. You've got a quote vulnerable woman and an unstable man, which I think was a more comedic term in the '90s, before we had so many news stories about unstable man stabs or kills or shoots. So now they're they're at a home unstable. One is vulnerable. One is unstable. The only thing missing is someone shouting Heathcliff across the moors. Which I believe is a reference to Wuthering Heights. Wuthering Heights, yeah. Wuthering Heights. Uh, how how often, Adam, do, do heights wuther? I, <laughs> I don't even know what a wuther is. I'm gonna. I'm. I looked up the word wuther just now. It is an intratransit. It's an intransitive verb to blow with a dull roaring sound. 
So it's just uh, it's just literally like you're at a high place and waves are going like. They Wah. couldn't just say blowing heights. No, they couldn't. They couldn't say like, whang heights. I mean, weathering is kind of close to that. Yeah, no, you have to make it more poetic. It's, it's it's what sells romance novels. It's true. You can't um, you can't just title it like uh, people fucking. You gotta you gotta put like a little <laughs> mystery. You gotta put like a. <laughs> I'm, so, I was, I'm still thinking about Joaquin Phoenix. I'm sorry. I gotta, I gotta, I, I gotta throw it off. I gotta shake it off. I gotta shake it off. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, <laughs> we, uh, so Fraser is going to uh, intervene. He, uh, him and Martin are going to go to Crane Manor to, because uh, they think they need to stop, or Fraser thinks he needs to stop uh, now we're making a horrible mistake. Uh, I, uh, I I don't know exactly what he thinks Snyles is going to do, but mm-hmm. it's whatever it is. It's presumably not good for him and uh, Maris's marriage. Yeah. So uh, he's he's off to stop it, and then uh, we cut to back to the the mansion. Uh, it's Daphne uh, or Niles is at the piano. He's playing. Uh, Daphne comes in. She's wearing a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's like a nightgown, an nighty. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a frilly, frilly thing. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very sexy. Mm-hmm. And Niall sees this, and he's, you know, he he kind of messes up playing the the notes that he was playing. Um, <laughs> so it, and he's like, oh, I thought you were gonna put in something, you know maybe a little bit more bulky and Daphne's like, well, no, I couldn't because, you know, Eris's uh, clothes don't really fit me. She's a lot smaller than me, she is which a, again a... is, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. It, it's again meant to sort of in a picture of, you know, Maris's appearance. She is smaller than Daphne. The clothes that she wears are significantly smaller than Daphne to the point where Daphne couldn't normally wear them, which I mean, she's not, She's she's Daphne is already a pretty pretty skinny woman, right? So but, it can only it only makes you it only makes you question how skinny or or frail or whatever you want to say Maris has to be in order for her clothes not to fit Daphne. She is canonically first of all we've we've never seen her, and she's also very small, which I believe means uh, Maris is a leprechaun. I believe uh, Mar- <laughs> I believe I and that would explain why she's wealthy is that Niles is trying to catch her to give uh, her pot of gold and uh, presumably obtain her wealth in that way. That's why he's trying to I keep... thought you were... I, th- I thought... I, th- I think it would be a far better payoff if it turned out that, like, sort of, like, go the psychological route because this is Frasier and, and just uh, turns out Maris was, like, sort of a mass hallucination. Oh, oh, the parts I see. Of all the people who's, who, who, who <laughs> were involved with her. Yeah. Uh, Niles has just been living in this large castle alone, and he would have to give up the illusion he's created if he ever... Like, he agrees to all these plans with Ian Maris, but of course Maris can't come because she's not real, and she never has been real. And that, uh... Yeah. That, yeah, that... Maris died 15 years ago. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, no, it's a spooky... <laughs> Ugh, well. Uh, <laughs> we cut to, um... We we cut to uh, Frasier and and uh, well no it's we we cut, we go back to Frasier's apartment for a second. Uh, f- uh, Frasier, uh, we we hear Frasier's answering machine machine for the first time, and of course Frasier's answering machine message is hello. This is Doctor Frasier Crane. I'm listening because that's what he says on his show. Very uh, clever. What yeah. a what a what an awful person. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Niles is calling Frazier. It's basically saying that he's got a crisis uh, on his hands and that he needs some type of support. Uh, of course, Frazier isn't hearing this. He's already on his way to see Niles. The only person who hears this is Eddie. Eddie. This is our Eddie. This is our Eddie cameo for the episode. Uh, it's some fun Eddie stuff. Getting into some fun Eddie shenanigans. Yeah, we need. We just need a whole episode for Eddie. Mm-hmm. One of these days. Um. We, we we get to find out what he does when when the the cranes are around. Oh. That'll be, <laughs> that be would, Eddie's day out. Wow, what a time that would be. Um. So, 
uh, we get back to Fraser and Martin. They're, of course, in the car driving to uh, Niles's, uh mansion. Um, they're, it, it's pouring rain. Poor. They're, they're arguing. They're having sort of that classic, you know, back and forth. Oh, they don't agree which way to go, which way is the fastest way to go via car uh, to get to the mansion. They're arguing classic, over directions. Classic Fraser Martin not quite seeing eye to eye type stuff. Yeah. Um, we get back to Niles and Daphne who are in uh, a bit more. Yeah. They're, they're, they're getting, uh, getting a little closer. Um, Niles is trying to start a fire. Uh, they talk about, Oh, I think at some point, I think we've already passed this point, I, but we probably. Um, oh, the the, the I, whole the whole Eric thing. Did, we did we. Yeah, yeah. So the Eric. I don't know if it comes up now or if it comes. Came it up came earlier. up. It came up when she first because uh, Niles makes a comment like, "Oh, like when she first get there, like don't worry, you can cook, and then you can go on your date with Eric. We'll get you out of here real quick." And then uh, Daphne bursts into tears. On account of it is revealed that uh, Eric broke up with her because he he needs to pursue his music. He can't be distracted, which uh, Daphne knows is a lie because she's heard his music. But um, bum, and it's uh, it's sort of a scenario. It is around this point it's revealed that uh, Daphne is heartbroken, and that is when Maris calls to let Niles know she won't be there. So it's revealed in this big dark house with no electricity. Uh, they have it all to themselves. Uh, oh, oh no. And then, um, yeah. Um, Fraser doesn't know though that, uh, Daphne's broken up with someone, does she? No, he does is, he? he is completely unaware. As far as he knows, uh, Niles is going to assault her even though he, uh, she's in a relationship. Fraser seems to have a very low opinion of his brother, don't you think? Yeah, he's kind of. This is, by the way, this isn't a thing that he can resolve with like a like a phone call. Like he has to leave that sec. He can't call Niles and be like, "Hey, just think about what you're doing." Uh, in, in fact, he doesn't even like tell uh, Martin, "Hey, stay here. Give him a phone call." I feel like the right thing to do is I'm going to drive over and check in on them and make sure everything's okay. But you instead, he leaves, which creates the situation where Eddie. Uh, gets to answer the phone. And it, I'm sure Eddie, in his mind, if he could speak, would be like, don't do it, Niles. You've got such a wonderful marriage. But unfortunately, he's a dog, so he can't communicate such complex thoughts. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, it, 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 it's, it's strange, I think, that Fraser. yeah, like you were saying, he... The second he heard that that Maris wasn't going to be there in the house, he... he, he my God, he'll attack her. It's like, <laughs> this is your brother. What are you talking about? Yeah, like, he couldn't call her. He, he couldn't be like, Niles, don't do anything with Daphne. And he's yeah. like, I'm not. I'm, I'm, gonna, yeah. I'm just hanging in. He's like, I can hear you assaulting her over the phone. <laughs> I'll be right there. Like, ah, okay, fine. Um, so, yeah, it's it, it, Niles is at this point comforting Daphne. Um, uh, because of course she, she feels like she falls in love too fast. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas Niles, she, Daphne, I guess she has sort of a very idealized, uh, uh, picture of Niles and Maris's relationship. Yes. He thinks they're very happily married. That's, that's the impression that I got. Yes. Um, so Daphne's almost envious of, uh, uh, Alice's relationship and kind of uses this uh, as a means of I, I don't know it, it's it's Niles is just trying to make Daphne feel better about the fact that um, you know she she that her, her boyfriend broke up with her yes even though they hadn't been together that long but you know they've been together um, they were together for as far as we know within the confines of the show maybe enough for one date we saw one date canonically and right. that is enough for daphne to be heartbroken yeah and they're at as they're talking about this they're like laying down next to each other it's a very sort of compromising position i guess to be found in not that i think they're found like this but 
um, it's it, it makes it all the funnier when we have sort of our uh, sort of our comedic payoff where uh, all of a sudden the Glockenspiel uh, that uh, hasn't we've been told hasn't run in years, you know, just sort of you know starts playing like it's. Uh, like everything, like it, it's it's working again. It's a miracle. Uh-huh. Um, and and Daphne, of course, makes the comment, oh, "Doctor Crane, your Glockenspiel has sprung to life." <laughs> uh, and you can guess what. Yeah. And then he, and then after a, after a long, after a lengthy uh, acting session by David Hyde Pierce, he goes, "Oh, the clock. You mean the clock? Yes, yes." You know the clock. It's making noise. Right. Like, why would it take you that long to connect the dots? Unless you just really thought she was talking about your boner. Talking about your big old floppity penis. Uh, yeah, no, that was um, a, an interesting, interesting uh, brain fart by Doctor Niles Crane. So yeah, Niles uh, is very surprised by this. Uh, he remarks, "Marisol will be delighted." Um, Daphne was like, oh, you really love her, don't you? And there's he's like, like, there's a long pause, there's a long thoughtful pause by Niles as he realizes, like, oh, yeah, I, Mar- Maris will be really happy about this. And he kind of, he thinks about what he's doing, and he sort of, uh, yeah, he kind of kind of reflects and thinks about what he, what's what's going yeah, on there. He, he sort of, you know, has a little monologue about you know as love is a funny thing isn't it yeah. sometimes it's exciting and passionate sometimes it's something else something comfortable and familiar that newly exfoliated little face staring up from across the breakfast table mm-hmm. sharing a lap together when you see someone wearing a lot white after labor day mm-hmm. um and and this of course is him and maris um mm-hmm. that's that's their relationship it's so it's a it's <laughs> um, a charming a picture that that does it in a in an odd moment, it does sort of entail that, in because we've seen it. I I'd like to think Niles is pretty like, uh, you know, uh, he, you as as much as he is pompous, that is also who he is in his spare time. Like he's he's a heart on his sleeve. He actually is that arrogant and stuff. And you get the vibe that when he talks about Maris in this way, like oh, he probably likes Maris because he can be his most. Uh, Nile self around her because uh, she welcomes and is open to that sort of haughtiness, which is uh, kind of it's it's. I mean, you know, ideally they wouldn't be dicks, but if you're gonna be, at least you have like a person that can align with you in that uh, sort of fashion. Yeah, I mean, yeah, relationships can be be like that. Um, yeah. Um, and then of course at this moment, um, Fraser. Uh, he, he, we see him in the background. He's he's drenched with 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 rain. He spots uh, Daphne and Niles uh, from outside through the windows. Um, Daphne's kind of leaning in for to Niles, to give him like a kiss on the cheek. And then Fraser sees this, and of course, assuming the worst, he starts you know pounding uh, on on the windows, freaking Stop! out. No! Yeah, much like a, much like a it, like a Frankenstein's mon like. Just, just if you've with... seen if you've seen Dustin Hoffman in The Graduate, it's it's <laughs> it, that's it's yeah that. very similar. Um, so, of course, Niles and Daphne they like they're they're surprised to see Fraser there. Um, Fraser is like, oh my god, you've you've gone mad. You'll regret this for the rest of your life. And uh, of course, they have no idea what he's talking about. They. He's it's it's a very awkward moment for Fraser where he has to justify him his, his bursting in like this his one hundred percent lack of trust in his brother uh, and also all the logical lapses as as we've pointed out he could have could have called the called him on the phone could have he's decided to drive however far away uh, uh, Niles the Crane Manor's mansion is from his uh, apartment in Seattle. And it's prob- they're probably not not it might not be distant, but in order to have a mansion, it's got to be at least a little ways off of like urban Seattle, right? So it must be a significant trip. And uh, he's come out this way and to yell at these two people uh, that he's presumed are uh, passionately embraced, uh, which they both find uh, at least Daphne finds completely laughable. Right, she's very insulted uh, for for Niles. Mm-hmm. She's she's 
talking about, Dr. Crane, you have some nerve to imply that your brother would do anything so deplorable. Yes. Which, of course, is a little cutting because Nels, Nels does, 100%. of course, feel that way about Daphne. <laughs> yes. We do know that. Yes. Um, but at the same time, we also know that he, he isn't going to do whatever Frazier thought. Right. Um, and, and she has a fun little, why, just months ago, he had a beautiful speech about how much he loves his wife and how they cherish, how he cherishes her excruciating little face and how they laugh at white people. <laughs> Which I think was my favorite line of the episode. I like I anything, so the... I like any joke where a minute later you get to hear another character's interpretation of the joke and it's just slightly off. And I thought that, that's delightful. Um... So, of course, Frazier has to sort of backpedal a bit. Um, he's like, well, I I want you to, uh, I just wanted you to stop standing here in silence. Let's <laughs> let's play some piano music. Let's, let's, let's play them keys. And then uh, insist that Niles comes over and uh, they, play a, they play a duet on the piano and start having musical fun, which is great. Uh, oh wait, shoot! Uh, Fraser, as we'll recall, abandoned Martin in the car in the middle of a rainstorm and just kind of left right, him. We, there. Def- we did. I, I was I was watching that because I don't think we do. We see Fraser leave the car. I I I no yeah he, rem- he leaves and then Martin calls out. It'll be quicker if you take the uh, the the shortcut. And then we I don't think we see Fraser reply. But then Martin calls. That's well the same to you, Mister. And then presumably either Fraser like ignored him. Or flipped him off, or something. Gave him some gesture to let him know, like, stuff it, right. because he was he was uh, he was he, he was tired of Martin's uh, directional advice. So so Martin is still in the car, but Fraser has decided to hunker down at the the the, ma- the mansion, and he's going to play a duo with Niles and uh, ask Niles, or oh, is everything really all right? And I was like, absolutely, Fraser, my Glockenspiel is working again. <laughs> Which, uh, fast, just, uh, just an odd thing to say. That's, yep, that, yeah, exactly. Um, so we get our end credits scene where it is, it, it's all of, it's Frazier and Daphne and Niles all gathered around the piano having a grand old time. We look out the window and we see Martin, who's in the rain, a very old man, uh, trying to get their attention, but he can't, presumably because the music's so loud. Um, and not, and not he's like, just not feeble, adult, you know, not feeble, but he is medically uh, disabled. He he has a he has a he has to walk with a. So we watch this poor uh, man with a with a physical disability legally, uh, desperately trying to get into this warm house out in the rain, and uh, presumably uh, he he uh, freezes out there. Presumably he and yeah. he and Eric, who I will point out. Uh, this is the first episode where he has a name, and also the last episode we see uh, him appear in Frasier. Also, his only other IMDb credit is on the video game Gabriel Knight, uh, which is one of them FMV games that came out in the 90s. Yeah, we've talked about FMV games we on have, this We show. have discussed FMV games on this episode. <laughs> I, I want there to be, like, there should have been like a Frasier FMV game, don't you oh, think? What a, what a journey it would have been watching Frasier uh, handle radio guests. Uh, in full motion video. Um, so yeah, that is that's gonna be the episode we got. Uh, that's midwinter's midwinter's night's dream. Mid, uh, it's a it's a Shakespeare reference. It's midwinter night's dream, and mid right. Mm-hmm. No, I got that. Did you? We were we, yeah. we had to we had to fight <laughs> to get there. We had. To... <laughs> um. So. We, we we have our next episode. Uh, let's talk about it. Okay. Um, uh, and the whipper is. And the whipper as is. Supposed to, as and the whimper. Oh, is, the whimper. Got it. Whimper, like yeah, like the, to me, yeah. you know. Um, so Fraser discovers that he is nominated for a local broadcasting award, and when it obsesses him until he beats an unlucky competitor for the same reward. Oh my. Uh, award. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, the, the first time we see Frazier accept an award for his, uh, radio broadcasts. What shenanigans is he going to get into, huh? Oh, I can't wait. I'm obsessing so- over this award. That is such a Frazier thing to, ah, uh, Frazier. What are you going to learn that happiness comes from within or some such? 
What do you get? You, you, awards don't make you happy, Frazier. Uh, your your family and friends are the uh, the things that make you happy, and uh, that's how this episode did win an award, though. Oh, oh well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, Frazier, a show with tons of awards. Yep. But uh, radio, your radio show, Frazier, you you got to learn how to be happy with you. For, you you gotta you gotta you gotta take happiness from you know you gotta you gotta look every day in the mirror. You can't you know all the, all these. All these trophies on the mail. The true, the true, the true gold comes from a from a heart made of gold, Fraser. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that is gonna do it for today's episode. Again, my I've I've been Adam Fraser, your host. Uh, Wes Corin, thank you for joining me. Imagine what Daniel Day Lewis fucks like in a <laughs> <laughs> in like a role All play right. scenario. <laughs> Back to the abyss with you. <laughs> the Fraser on Fraser podcast wishes to thank KCL780.net for providing episode transcripts and Ronald O'Connell for providing our theme song, Fraser Mitty. <laughs>